All right, now that we've got the extruder done, we're basically going to need to mount it to the carriage. You're going to have to remove this back plate, even though you just put it on. And then um, we're also going to have to trim these belts. Probably going to go maybe, it's going to be a pretty close trim. So now's a good time to double check that all your belts are good and tight. Um, mine, are, mine are still pretty good. Some people go by the pitch. Um, and I, I checked mine. They're, they seem, they actually seem tighter than my other printers. Um, so I think it's good. Okay, and now I've got the back plate off. I'm going, you're going to use the two, uh, self-tapping M2 screws, and those are going to hold the extruder with these holes right here in the X carriage. Okay, when you're putting this on to the X carriage, make sure your M2 screws are going in these two holes here. I've got one in, the other one goes here and that this part is facing towards you. All right, I've got mine in, both screws in, and I'm just gonna tighten them up. And these are pretty, uh, they go in pretty tight, so just keep working at them. Okay, I now have those screws in there. I've got a little play in mine, so I'll probably tighten those down a little more. But one thing to know is that you're actually gonna be when you assemble this with the hot end, there's actually um, a few other screws that are gonna go in too, um, that are all going into the heat insert. So these are really just more, I think, for positioning. <clears throat> and since these are GT2 uh, belts, the two stands for two millimeters, so you can count five full teeth from here and then cut it. All right, I went ahead and cut the belts. I lowered the bed as you can see here, made it easier to kind of come under and access it like this. And I just counted the teeth. Okay, now we're going to try and um, put everything together. One thing I'll say is just try to keep these wires out of the way because you don't want anything getting pinched behind this area. Um, later on, we're gonna be mounting uh, a wire strain relief in the back. Okay, at this point, I'm just um, still screwing things in here on the hot end. Everything's going in nice and smoothly which is good i will say that these wires um and the and the little belt nubs were a little bit of a challenge so this last screw seems to be a little stubborn so i might have to there we go and you want to make sure these are all going in flush or actually going in further than flush the other thing you want to make sure is that your bearing is aligned in the back here so hopefully you can see that you gotta make sure that's that's going in. <clears throat> One thing that you're probably gonna notice while you're doing this is that where the heck do the wires go? And that's a great question. They're gonna end up going up the back right and left. So I ended up, even though I have the thermistor coming out the same side, I'm going to try to run it up the left side and the heater cartridge up the right. There is a little bit of a groove there, so it won't rub the belts, but it's um it's gonna require some finagling for sure to get that in there. Another tip here, I found laying it on its back was probably the easiest way. Um, I also ended up having to do alternate the screws because a couple of the heat ins inserts were not perfectly aligned. So um, they weren't bad, but, you know, it was enough. Or if you tighten these two and then tried this one, it would uh, kick out a little bit. So, um, no, but I, I got it in okay. And you want to just keep going down until these are recessed and you really can't turn them anymore just about got it and if you do it this way you got gravity helping you instead of working against you so that's kind of nice you also want to make sure that the bearing is definitely in the socket in the back but it, it really can't go in unless that's the case so all right i think at this point i've got it and then of course keep an eye out for your wires make sure they're not going all over the place which is what they're going to want to do the bearing in the back of mine is pretty flush, which is what you want. If there's a lot of space there, you probably need to go back and retighten it up again. Okay, for this next step, you're going to be setting the motor in. Um, you might have to move your, or I'm sorry, your end stop pin out of the way. And it should line up with these holes, and you're going to need an M38 on the front. And in the back, there's another piece that we put together in a previous step that's going to mount, and it's going to be used for wire strain relief as well. Okay, so those are mostly in. Now I'm going to add this other piece here. 
and um, the three by eights should be able to bite into that as well. Okay, before I go too much further, I wanted to do some wire management. So this actually got a little, a lot more complicated than I was hoping it would be. Basically, these zip ties that you need to use are 1.8 millimeter. Um, unfortunately, four inch is closer to two and a half. So what I did, rather than spend 15 bucks on a pack of a thousand zip ties, I just took a zip tie and I trimmed it um, in half. I cut it lengthwise. So I used those scissors that you see there, and then I started kind of right here on the end of the zip tie. And then I just started cutting halfway all the way to the end, almost to the end, and then I just snipped it at, the, at this end. So it took me a few tries, but what I've got in place now seems to be holding just fine. And you're also going to need to do the same thing on the, the left-hand side as you look towards the front. Okay, here's what one looks like right before I'm going to snip it on the end. So you don't want to start cutting it until you get about here. Otherwise, um, you're going to cut off too much where it won't lock. So here I'm just running the zip tie. I ran it where this end is out, and I did it the same way on the other side. This is probably a good area where I would... I don't understand why they couldn't just make that hump a little bigger and make it work with a standard four inch. So that might be a future remix or something. Before you connect your zip tie, make sure all your wires um, that you want coming out are actually coming out. The last thing you want to do is have one hanging and have to redo this again. Um, the other thing is this stuff can touch the belt a little bit, but you still need to make sure you have clearance behind the belt because you don't want that belt rubbing on the extrusion. Okay, everything is bundled up nice and tight. Nothing is touching the belt on this side. On the other side, the heater cartridge wiring is touching it a little bit, but um, since the belt is not touching the extrusion, I'm fine. I now have the strain relief piece on the back of the motor, and you can kind of see these wires coming in. They're going to all eventually come up to the top right here and probably go through some loom um, to the back of the printer. I'm not real crazy about this particular... Um, piece I think it could be maybe a little bigger even and possibly have some other better areas for zip ties but I'm going to try to go with it uh, I know there are some remixes out there so take a look at those if you're not too thrilled about this one just to keep the wires from going crazy on me I went ahead and zip tied uh, stuff on the hot end here so I can easily access the bottom where I'm going to be needing to mount things as well as the back panel here 